The goal of this podcast is to review the Ottawa knee rules, which are guidelines for x-ray of the knee after injury, and to go over the knee exam, focusing on some common injuries of the knee. Nothing ever takes the place of a good history. During the interview, some key questions to focus on are the activity in which the knee injury occurred, position that the knee was in during injury, was it flexed, hyperextended, and if it was a traumatic contact and the direction of the force which caused the injury. Was the player able to continue with activity or did they limp off the field or were they carried off? Was there immediate swelling, pain, ecchymosis? Did they hear a pop or a snap? Is the player experiencing any locking or catching sensation or any instability? When examining the patient, start with watching the patient walk to the exam table. Ask them to point out areas of discomfort, inspect for any joint effusion and or ecchymosis seen by loss of the anatomical landmarks. When doing the examination, start at the tibial tuberosity and palpate up the patellar tendon to its origin on the inferior border of the patella. Tenderness of the patellar tendon can be indicative of a patellar tendon disruption. Testing for the patellar tendon can be done by asking the patient to fully extend their knee and hold it firm while you test their strength. If they are able to hold against your counter pressure, this is indicative that the tendon is intact. Palpate the medial and lateral borders of the patella looking for tenderness of the retinaculum. Tenderness in either of these areas are suspicious for subluxation or dislocation of the patella. Next, palpate the medial and lateral joint line, found by going to the inferior pole of the patella and falling into the two sulci medial and lateral. Follow the joint line posteriorly making sure to palpate the posterior edge. Tenderness on the joint line medial or lateral is usually indicative of a meniscal tear. Next, palpate the superior border of the quadriceps to test for tenderness and possible disruption of the quadriceps as it inserts onto the patella. Then turn your attention to the two anterior bursae of the knee, the pes anserine bursa, the semimembranous tendon of the hamstring, sartorius gracilis, all intersect, and Gertie's tubercle, where the iliotibial band runs down and inserts inferiorly at Gertie's tubercle. Here you will have a lateral bursae. Next, with the patient supine, test range of motion and flexion extension. Placing a hand on the patella, you can check for tracking and for any signs of crepitus. You can check for tenderness with palpation of the medial and lateral patella and for tenderness of the posterior surface by subluxing the patella and feeling the posterior edge. Any apprehension with medial or lateral subluxation is more suspicious for a subluxation or dislocation injury. Next, we move on to ligamentous testing. The ACL and PCL cross in the center of the knee. Their role is to protect against anterior-posterior translation of the tibia in relation to the femur. Testing of the ACL is done with the Lachman's test. You want to have the patient completely relax, You want to stabilize the femur with your non-dominant hand and place your dominant hand on the tibia. With the patient completely relaxed, anteriorly translate the tibia. A firm endpoint should be felt like a snap of a rope. If the endpoint feels soft or rubbery, like a rubber band, this is suspicious for an ACL tear. Next, we're going to test the medial collateral ligament, or the MCL. You're going to take the tibia, and place it firmly underneath your arm. You're going to place your hand laterally along the edge of the knee and you're going to be pushing a valgus stress on the knee while swinging the leg outward. 
By placing this valgus stress on the knee, you are opening up the medial joint and stressing the medial collateral ligament. Next, you move on to the lateral collateral ligament found on the lateral aspect of the knee. You're going to place your hand medially. You're going to stabilize the knee again underneath your arm and give a varus stress this time. This opens up the lateral compartment of the knee, stressing the lateral collateral ligament. Next, you want to test for any tenderness at the fibular head. You can palpate up the fibula, and then palpate around the fibular head for any type of tenderness in this area. The Ottawa knee rules are a guideline for primary care physicians to follow of when to get an x-ray when a knee injury occurs. A knee x-ray is only required for knee injuries patients with any of these findings. If they're older than 55, they have isolated tenderness of the patella with no other tenderness or pathology on examination, tenderness of the head of the fibula, inability to flex to 90 degrees, or the inability to bear weight both immediately and in the emergency department, four steps.